Already? So I'm ready to start before I actually start this run. I changed my sub weapon to the X button because uh, putting anything important on a shoulder button is like cringy to me. But I've also had the unfortunate experience of like constantly having really bad shoulder buttons, so it's probably a personal bias. And there's probably nothing actually wrong with the default settings. We just change the game title real quick and fire it up. Fortunately, my laptop is being insanely slow. Oh, yo, what's up, RPG? Rolling, man. Oh, you're in the Discord. Sorry, I don't have my headphones on or anything. Because I can't have, uh, I can't put Discord to the stream, so I'm just solo commentating. But anyway. Oh, wait. I have the Amarok brightness on. Let's uh, put it back to its natural colors. There we go. Alright, without further ado, let's fire it up. Watch this nice, lovely cutscene opening up. So this game is the very first thing I started with. And just like you saw with Castlevania 1, it was something that, you know, I wanted to speed run, but the game is just so good to me that I just couldn't stop just playing through it over and over, eventually incorporating some strats. The first time I beat this game was January 1st, 2013, with no game overs. And that's the day, that's the first day I considered myself to be speedrunning. It was January 1st, 2013. So the cross here I just picked up is gonna be my main sub weapon the entire game. Because the cross is just so damaging when you build it up to a triple. I'm gonna try this wall clip. Nice. Yeah, that jump into the stairs, oh god. That's like, that's one of my least favorite parts of the run right there. So. The way to really bring down your time in this game outside of, you know, obviously, strategy upgrades is pure movement. The movement is very subtle, but very important in this game. And just like you saw that big error I made there, you have to, you know, precisely jump through the stairs right at the corner to optimize your time as much as possible. Boss quick kills are very important as well, because most bosses in this game you kill almost instantly. And this is why a triple cross is so powerful. So that's why we carry the cross throughout the entire game. It just completely obliterates everything. The previous task of this game used the cross and the holy water, but it was proven later on that the cross is just way too powerful.
There's also another very small thing in this game. It's kind of believed that the jumping mechanics in this game were going to be very similar to Super Metroid, where you're pretty much in entire control of the jump. So, you know, you would hold the button as long as you want to get a certain amount of height. You know, let go to drop down immediately. However, they probably scrapped that idea. But, if that theory is correct, then the first three frames of the button push, they actually forgot to get rid of, or something like that. So, if you hear me refer to anything as a one frame jump, I am swiping the jump button for just one frame. It's not the, it's not a situation where I need to actually press the jump button on a certain frame on the screen. It's just holding it and then releasing the jump button the very next frame. And it becomes very beneficial in some places. The biggest benefit is in the middle of stage 8, you can make a jump under a crusher that saves like 3 to 4 seconds with a one frame jump. You can do one here as well, but I'm not feeling confident about it if I have to be honest. So It saves 20 frames though if you do it right, but I, I don't care about 20 frames right now. The spikes that you saw throughout this level and well, pretty much in the entire game, they're instant kill. So, the last thing you want to do is hit any of them. Also, if I randomly mute my mic at any point, uh, my family's just like off and on doing stuff down here today, so... I even made that mistake before whipping diagonal by accident. That was pretty strange. But I did get the perfect ring glitch, which rolls insanely deep. So another very important thing in this game that you really want to know is backup strats. Backup strats are gonna make and break how well you can play this game. You also don't want to do that, but it really doesn't matter just because of the rest of the damage boost I need to do in the stage. I'm not really missing out on anything. Yeah, this stage has to be quiet sometimes because this is probably the hardest stage in the entire game to optimize. I've never seen a single run where anybody optimized this stage. Not one single run, not for me or anybody. Alright, good recovery. Let's see what these skeletons do. Alright, good. We actually want them to like space each other apart, but just for the sake of not chancing it and dying. Go. 
on mute for a bit, sorry guys. Ah, never mind, I'm good. We're all back then. So fortunately the first half of stage 4 is pretty simple. It's a nice cooldown from stage 3 since stage 3 is probably the hardest one in the game. If you get like a really nice early game and you're a bit nervous, it's still pretty hard to mess this first part of stage 4 up so you got a bit of cooldown time. Sometimes he goes down quick, sometimes he doesn't. There isn't much true randomness in this game. At least when you're speedrunning it, and you're just passing by them. Like, if you stay on the screen for a while, you know, it's gonna start to get random. But most of the enemy movements, well, some of them are set you'll be able to do the same thing every time. And then there's other enemies that have a couple of patterns they can do when you approach them. And you just need to know the appropriate strategy to do for whichever pattern situation you're in. coming up. Mode 7, hell yeah dude. So, I actually need to do this screen very very specifically because these skeletons that are spawning will get out of control if I mess up anything at all. And I mean just about anything. But as long as I do the same thing every time, the game will do the same thing every time. Usually I boost off that skeleton but I took an extra boost off Bexel. So I took it safe. But here comes a zip. I'll explain it afterward. I've actually struggled with this recently, so I might not get it. Yeah. So that was actually okay. I misjudged the first bet. Normally the crosses take him out, but I threw them. My timing on the crosses were just a little bit off, so the bat didn't die. But I didn't react appropriately when I clipped out of bounds. So if that happens, you're doomed. There's nothing you can do. However, if I just kept holding right, or... Yeah, if I kept holding right instead of pressing left when I did, and if I just waited a little bit longer to zip to the left to despawn that bat, I would have been okay. But I simply misreacted. Whoops. I forgot I don't have the cross. And fortunately, unlike Castlevania 1, uh, it's a little easier to get through these stages without anything. So, I'll be just fine. There's also a cross at the beginning of this next stage. So yeah, know, know your backup strats. So right at the beginning of this stage, you got these random harpies. Just like you see me getting smacked in the face right there. 
Oh shit. You actually have to jump up that slope to reduce 10 frames alive. But I didn't start jumping at the right time and kind of need the cross, so just waited for that. And there's three sections here where the harpies can randomly spawn. And that's one of the parts of the game that is truly random. They will spawn whenever they want, whatever position on the screen they want to. Just like this. I'm also looking for my double shot. <laughs> Smack. Right. Well, there it is. I was honestly too focused on finding that double shot. I kind of... I didn't do the start of that screen like you're supposed to, but it's all good. Because coming up is... One of those parts of the game that's just going to have you on the edge of your seat, and that's the chandelier. There's a very good chance I'll die. I am going for the one cycle, because this is the wrong deep marathon, and not going for the one cycle doesn't roll deep, so... It's not really much of a choice in this situation. I don't know if this double shot strat's going to work. Ah, oh, it works. I was gonna say you don't know how close I was to dying there, but I, I think you could see how close I was. So that, in my opinion, pretty much made up for the mistake on the zip. One cycle chandelier is always some good eye candy. So this strat right here is actually really hard, but if you use a whip right there while those uh, ectoplasms are on screen, you'll get an extra 10 frames of lag, so... The problem with that strat is the first cross I threw has to be very precise in terms of its height, or else it won't work. However, I'm confident enough in my gameplay to always do it, so... I did make a theory test of this game, and the time for that run is 30 minutes and 38 seconds. The record is 3147 by Furious Paul. He's a very long time speedrunner of this game. He had some year breaks in between, however... He gave this game life in 1999, that was his first documented speedrun of this game, which if I remember correctly was like 3740 something. And these coffins suck. Again, another really precise trick. Another occurrence of purely random RNG here, where these dancers will spawn wherever they want. I should be able to get by this one. Right. So, quick kill. Try force? Hell yeah, dude. So yeah, I've been running this, like I said, since the beginning of 2013, so I can talk about this game for days, probably. 
There's only so much information I can give in one run while trying to play at the same time. Simon has a 10 frame crouching animation if you drop from two blocks or higher, but you can avoid that by jumping right as you land. However, if you want to avoid all 10 frames, you need to jump frame perfectly. Very nice. I'm abusing the cross there, the standing cross, because when you throw a cross on the ground, you're stuck on the ground unless you jump. So, what I'm doing there is whipping cross and then hold right so I don't fall off. Alright, gotta turn off my mic for a bit, so, but I'll bring it back on when I can.
wrong, I think. So yeah, you saw me complete stage 8, the one before this, which is outside of stage 3, the hardest one in the game, definitely. I got the one frame j jump under the spike crusher in the second room. I couldn't hear my own cue there either. So. Rip. Yeah, that stage eight was really solid. I went for Vegas as well, which was the disappearing blocks right before the boss. A runner that everyone should be familiar with, the Mexican runner, actually came up with that name, Vegas, because it is what, you know, Vegas is all about. Win the lotto. And those disappearing platforms are pretty much a complete lottery. It's just, it's at the mercy of the game. Oh, whoops. I like... <laughs> I jumped through the stairs. So I didn't get hit as I was going on them. Oh, this guy's being a jackass. Yeah, this is not gonna go well. Yeah, that's up too high. I might be able to recover it though. It could have been worse. I got the Triforce as well, so... Still pretty exquisite in my opinion. With that bat fight, you need to... You gotta hit the big bat 22 times. But on the 22nd hit, you wanna get the bat to break into three parts when he's, you know, lower on his swoop. So then you can just throw your crosses at him and it destroys him in like two seconds or something like that. Maybe less. One to two seconds. You can jump over this bone pillar too, but I'm, I don't feel like risking that. Yeah, a lot of lag going up these vertical shafts. This screen is pretty cool to watch. There's a lot of fancy stuff going on. You can make an early ring cycle here by damage boosting off that Medusa head and then grabbing it at the right time. And then, oh, what the hell is that? Uh-oh. Whoa. Hello? Okay. I pressed jump a good amount of times and Simon did absolutely nothing. I got both of the early ring cycles though. You need to manipulate that camera pretty precisely. So when that bone skeleton shoots the fireball it won't hit you. And hopefully I get a right side spawn, because I don't have enough crosses for left. Oh, metal. That's great. So this is the worst spawn. If he throws the bandages, which he didn't, that would be like the absolute worst spawn. But this is still the second worst spawn. If, if he's in this corner here, or in the right corner, you'll be able to get him in one cycle. And a cycle will cost you anywhere from 8 to 12 seconds. It depends how good your first cycle is. How do I deal with lag affecting my gameplay so much in this? Because there's a lot of lag. Well, the lag itself isn't too random. Like, it, it's kind of weird. Like, the lag is almost fixed, you can say. As long as you're traversing through the screen. You know, the same way as usual. And this game's actually good with, like... If it's lagging, it's... Your inputs don't really get eaten. 
I don't really know what happened on that gear on stage A because I hit the jump button multiple times and nothing happened, but besides that. I also wanted to skip that bad boost, but I wasn't fully decided on it, so I just stuck to the stairs instead. Which was still a better alternative. Alright, that jump right there really sucks because... Stairs have this really weird thing in this game where there's just pixels where you will go right through the stairs even if you have the appropriate inputs. And that specific jump to those stairs is very notorious for killing a lot of players, including myself. Up, back, there you go. One, two, where's he going? So coming up is the run killer of all run killers. Fucking slogger, dude. So I've had, to recent memory, six really good pace runs to this fight. Five of them died to this boss. And not just getting too many cycles, but just straight up killing me. Five out of six runs. Is, are you kidding me? And he gives me a, a fucking six cycle, dude. What the fuck? Holy shit, dude. That's like, maybe the fifth one I've ever done in a run. Holy shit, dude. Of course, it's on a run that doesn't matter. And then for this, I'm delaying his first cycle so I can do the quick kill on the second cycle. If I remember correctly, it's like, hot, like 40 frames, I think, compared to killing him immediately in the first phase, and then delaying the second phase. And then the death fight here is really sick. Pretty much spam crosses right when he traverses to the right side. Completely skipping. Oh, I might not do it here though. Yep. Alright, there's a... Uh, yeah, you're supposed to skip these patterns. Getting those whips in is pretty difficult though, because the timing is really tight. And as you saw, I missed one of them, so like, the whip was just hanging out in the air and that pretty much screwed everything over. But if you do that fight correctly, death will go down like in the middle of the screen as he's going to the right side to do one of his two attack patterns. And back in the old days, we didn't have that strat, so we were dealing with whatever attack patterns he gave. And that was figured out by our fellow Japanese runner, Hanage Belmondo. He's pretty much the mastermind behind most of the strats in this game. Unfortunately, after AGDQ 2015, whoa, that was nice, but anyway, after GDQ 2015, he was uh, just pretty much moving on in life and just like getting really busy with work-related things, so he hasn't been around much, but he developed most of this run. I'll take a 30, oh, whoops, my timer didn't stop. I'll take a 3327 with a zip death and, you know, of course, realistically, a lot of mistakes everywhere, but I, I don't care. I'm just trying to commentate it as much as I can. That's a really good time.
I was playing a lot of Zelda Link to the Past before this. Really grinding out the 124, however, I've pretty much halted playing that game for the most part for a little while, just taking a break from it, and I think my plan is to stick with Castlevania 4 for, you know, a few weeks or however long my phase lasts. I speedran this game from 2013 to the end of January 2015 for two years straight. There was no break in between that. There was no time I was inactive or anything. And then after that, my interest for other speed games just became too much and I started getting into a variety of things. However, I still come back to this game, you know, every few months or so for a couple of weeks. This game is pretty much my baby in speedrunning, I mean, how else can I put it? This game is pretty much what put me out there, I guess. I still remember... It wasn't long, maybe a week or something, but I would stream and get two to six viewers. And I already thought that was like amazing, that just like anybody at all was watching my stream back then. And then Funk Doc, Josh the Funk Doc, which is a legendary guy, he just linked my channel one day and like, it literally went from two to six viewers to 80 to 200 a day and that happened for like two weeks and then my house lost power for a week and then <laughs> it was rip after that i think everyone forgot for a while but that was like that that was the time where speedrunning where people were getting discovered and like there was always somebody new to find and always something new to get into as a viewer I feel like these days, people know more of what they want to watch and who they want to watch. So I was very, very lucky to be in the right place at the right time, that's really all it was, simply. So coming up now, we got Castlevania 3 by your boy Canis. Well, actually, wait, actually, because I originally have Canis scheduled for CB3 on another day. I'm actually going to talk to him real quick and see what he wants to do. So we're either going to do Castlevania 3 after this, or we're going to do Bomberman, because RPG's here now. But I'm going to mute my mic and just conversate with them for a minute and see what's going on. Just feel free to listen to the music credits music is unreal in this game. 